On the old highway maps of America, the main routes were red and the back roads blue. Now even the colors are changing. But in those brevities just before dawn and a little after dusk, times neither day nor night, the old roads return to the sky some of its color. Then, in truth, they carry a mysterious cast of blue, and it's that time when the pole of the blue highway is strongest, when the open road is beckoning, a strangeness, a place where a man can lose himself. To hit the road is a dream that most Americans share. To get into our car, van, pickup, or RV to see where the roads of America lead us. For some, it's to see what's out there. For others, it's to find something new, to escape the place or circumstances they are in, hoping to find someone new, or perhaps themselves, in the process. In 1978, home had become intolerable for a young professor teaching English at Stevens College in Columbia, Missouri. His teaching position was being eliminated. He had been separated from his wife and got word that she had found a friend. It seemed an opportune moment to hit the road, to satisfy that longing to see back roads America. On March 20th, 1978, with $26 in his wallet, $428 hidden under the dashboard of his green Ford Econoline van, a small gray spider crawling the dash, and four gasoline company credit cards, William Lee's heat moon struck out on a long, circular trip on the back roads of the United States. The journey took him through 38 states and hundreds of the don't blink or you'll miss it towns. From his travels, he wrote the New York Times bestseller, Blue Highways, which captured in words the mom and pop cafes, the 530 taverns, the magnificent, diverse scenery of 38 states, and the people he met along the way. In 2006, over lunch in downtown Columbia, Ed Ayler III first pitched the idea of him and his son revisiting the Blue Highway's route to Heat Moon. Their plan was to capture the journey photographically. He showed Heat Moon some photographs of the Oregon coast, part of his northwest route. Heat Moon told Ed that one of the most common questions he still receives from readers is when are you going to take the trip again to see how things have changed? He liked the idea, even though he thought it unlikely anyone would follow through with retracing the full route and set it into book form. From October 1, 2006 to August 6, 2008, Ed III and his son, Ed IV, photographed Heat Moon's memorable journey. With Heat Moon's elegant, graphic, and exact descriptions of landscapes and terrain, Driving along the same highways often resulted in deja vu. Time after time, a scene from the book came into focus as the Ailers rounded a bend or popped over a hill. The three and four calendar local cafes, corner taverns, and the entertaining and wise characters Heat Moon met along the way were a greater challenge to find nearly 30 years later, but over the next several years they tracked down 11 of the individuals still living. Can find photographs from the nearly 14,000 miles of the beautiful back roads of America updates, stories, and photographs of Heat Moon's characters side by side with the Ailers taken 30 years later, discussions with Heat Moons and artifacts from his trip, and you have Blue Highways Revisited. Revisited can update you three decades about many of the people and places of Blue Highways, but it can't reinvent the wit, humor, and storytelling Heat Moon brings to the page. So pick up your old copy of Blue Highways, or if your friend never returned it, get a new 30th anniversary copy. The page numbers cited throughout Blue Highways Revisited refer to the original book, so you can easily locate a passage and compare Heat Moon's verbal imagery with the Ehlers photographs taken 30 years later. With your copies of Blue Highways and Blue Highways Revisited, travel with us to a place where man can lose himself and find himself as well.